Child's Play. Alright everyone, we did my spoiler-free review. Now it's time to talk about all the juicy details in this remake and all the things that I liked and did not like about it that I couldn't talk about before. I felt like I shouldn't because I didn't want to taint anyone's experience going into the movie. After all, it is Thursday night when I record this, so it's too early. I didn't want to spoil anything in that review. So this is the spoiler review for those of you who have seen it or those of you who just want to ruin your experience. So feel free to ruin it. But this is your warning. It's in the title of the video. It's right here said out loud. You have been warned. Let's start off with the things that I did not like too much about it. Just little nitpicks, criticisms, a little... Just little things. Not too huge. Some of them kind of like I'm mixed on. Not quite sure how I feel. I will see this movie again, definitely. People roll their eyes when they hear me say I'm going to see a movie twice. People act like you're crazy if you see a movie twice at the theater. Like, who does that? Uh, a lot of people. I saw John Wick three times. That's right. Go ahead. Call me crazy. But I need to see this movie a second time to get all my thoughts together again to make sure like how if I how I feel about this will stay how it is right now but overall I enjoyed it I'm not sure what will change when I see it again if things will that I liked are going to be better the second time or things that I did not like or I'm gonna hate more that's why you see movies twice so it's not crazy sometimes you miss things sometimes you misheard things so shut the fuck up it's not crazy but the little things that I wasn't crazy about let's start off with one towards the end I'm not gonna go in order I said in my other review, without spoiling much, that there was one thing that was borrowed from the first film, one line that was taken out, and it was, this is the end, friend. Although I don't think the guy says friend. Now, what I did not care for was that it wasn't Andy that said that line. In the original, you got Andy, he lights the match, he says, you know, this is the end, friend. It's the iconic line from Andy in that film. If you quote that movie, that's the line people quote. In this film, instead, it's Mike Norris who comes back. You think he's dead, but he just comes back and he drops that line, and you're like, oh, the first movie. And then a second, a few seconds go by, and you're like, oh, wait, why did he say it? Oh, that should have been Andy. Just a minor little nitpick that I have. I wish... Andy could have said it, and Mike didn't need to say it. Andy was right there. He could have said it. Now, the third act of the movie, it could have went for broke, and it could have been crazy. We could have gotten, like, a lot of carnage. They do show you, like, the possibilities and the things that could have been great. Like, you're, like, you see these things set up. You see drones flying in the air. They got these sharp propellers. You see all these angry bears that come to life, and for some reason, they have teeth. Like, you see people are kind of, like, getting dragged away into aisles and they die off screen. So, it's a scene that's complicated to, like, know how many people died. You don't know. But you don't see too much on-screen carnage once the lights go out and shit's hitting the fan. Literally hitting the fan. Hitting the propellers of the, the drones. But I felt like they could have went for broke and, like, just went crazy and had lots of blood in that moment. They tamed it down, though. They, they, they gave us a couple of cool bloody kills before that. But in the third act, they could have went like Child's Play too crazy and had a lot of fun and had a blast. But instead, it was kind of a disappointment. It's not a terrible third act. I won't say it's the worst third act in the franchise, but it was still kind of underwhelming. Because there was like a hundred people and they leave the building as soon as like things you know go crazy. They leave in a minute and they're all gone. Like a few people get taken out. But it's like off camera. Now there is a couple of cool kills in this movie. And one of them that I liked was also kind of a bummer. Because you know when you see that first major kill that's gory. You get to the second one and it's kind of gory. You see like a leg get chopped off. and then But it's like a quick like two frames. Like, like blink and you miss it. It's very quick. And you don't see the aftermath of the body. So it's kind of like in your imagination. And sometimes that works for films. But in this one when you see that first kill and it's all on screen and it's bloody, and then you get to the second one, and it has this great setup, and then the person drops, and then they lose their leg, and it's, like, off camera after that. And you're like, well, what's this body look like? They, they don't show you any, like, aftermath shots of the body, what it might look, what it looks like after the fact. One thing that kind of disappointed me is that Chucky doesn't laugh, really. I think he laughs once, but it's off camera, like, he's laughing in the background, and it might be for, like, a second or two. I, I would have to watch it again to refresh my memory, but I don't you don't hear him laugh really you might hear him laugh once i like like i said i would have to watch it again but you have mark hamill the guy who's famous for not only luke skywalker but playing the joker and he has all kinds of laughs in his inventory so many different crazy things he could do 
he could bring another new iconic version of that Chucky laugh that's so iconic and popular about Chucky. You talk about Chucky, and you say the things you like about him, his personality, and his laugh. You hear his laugh in the background, you don't need to be watching it, you're like, that's Chucky. It's that iconic. But to be fair, I see kind of what they're going for. Like, it's a robotic doll. Is it programmed to laugh? It can't really feel emotions, really. It's just programmed to do what it thinks is right, and that's it. Like, it's not going to laugh. It doesn't have a whole human personality to it. So I can see why they kind of didn't go for that. Good night, Andy. Now, one thing about Andy that I thought was dumb and convenient was the fact that he didn't get rid of the doll as soon as the cat dies. He has a cat, the cat scratches him, and then the Chucky's like, that's it, Chuck, cat's gotta go. He gets rid of the cat, and I'm thinking, if that's me and my doll killed my cat, I don't care if the doll thinks it was doing what he thought was best for me, trying to protect me. I don't give a fuck. You're out of here, buddy. Literally, buddy. Get rid of the buddy doll. Just a small little nitpick. I was just like, really, I think I would get rid of the doll immediately. Like, that's that's the tipping point. That's you crossing the line, Chucky. But instead, he covers for the doll. Like, seriously. Just like, and, um, Andy's mom comes and he's like, where's where's Mickey Rooney, your cat? And Andy's like, well, I think it ran away. I guess maybe he thinks that the Aubrey's not going to, Aubrey Paul's, Karen, his mom's not going to believe him when he says that the doll did it because she doesn't throughout the film when other people are dying. And he's like, Chucky did it, Chucky did it. She's like, you're crazy. But still, man, tell the truth. The truth shall set you free. And I feel like the friends weren't utilized in any special way where they felt necessary. Andy has friends. That's something I like about this movie because in the original, he's just by himself. He's six years old. We don't see him interact with anybody but the doll. But his friends aren't really important. Like, I don't see how they're important plot-wise. Because they don't really do too much. And they don't have much personality. They're just kind of there. And they meet Chuck, They meet Andy and they instantly click somehow. It's because he has a doll. And then they're there towards the end of the third act. They're in the store with him. And they break him loose. That's the one good thing they do. I guess, you know, Andy's handcuffed to, like, a shopping cart. Because um, Detective Mike thinks he's responsible for his mom's death and other people's deaths so he's handcuffed and then the friends set him loose so that's the one thing that they were needed for but somebody else could have did that or you could just do like a small rewrite to get rid of them because they really at the end of the day i don't see their necessity for the plot and story but i could be wrong i would have to watch this movie again like i said but as of now that's really the only criticisms and little nitpicks that i have for the film spoiler uh, why so let's go over the things that I did like that are spoiler I like the explanation we get it's very simple and it's what everyone predicted from the get-go it's a doll that was purposely programmed to be evil and have no safety mechanisms no like rules to it it can say what the hell it wants it has no filter you got all these dolls being made in Vietnam and the guy who's working on the doll is like daydreaming and then he gets caught by the boss and the boss is like you're out of here you're fired go back to the street where I found you you pathetic piece of shit but first make that doll work quick just make that doll and then get out of here I want you to work some more and then I want you to leave so then the employee's like oh hi right, I'll make you a doll I'll make you a Fantastic fucking doll. Quickly deletes all the safety mechanisms in it and then says, all right, here you go. And then he jumps out of the building and kills himself. Now, that is some sensitive like shit. Like, there are stories of that shit actually happening. People that work for, like, Apple. I'm not sure this is true, but I've heard it. That there are employees in Asian countries that work for barely anything. And they jump out of windows and kill themselves because they're working like sweatshops and they just leap out and die. So I feel like that was thrown in this movie as like a little like message. Like, yeah, this this is shit that's happening. They're being mistreated. They're working for nothing. So this could be like the little political message in the movie. Like, we need to stop this. I don't know. I'm seeing things that might not be there. But hey, that's a positive right there. There's no politicalness. I was kind of worried. Like every movie that's coming out this year and some last year, they feel like they got to have some political message or... They got have like little jabs at certain parties and if you think one way that might piss you off. So I'm glad they didn't for some reason just throw a random political joke here and there. They kept it politics free. The big thing I like about this movie is the fact that we get to sympathize with Chucky now. Like that's different. Like I can get behind this character. I thought it was freaking hilarious and sad at the same time. All the things that Chucky's doing that he's like 
and with Mark Hamill's voice, it really compliments it. You feel for him. He just has this like innocent child, like naive personality. He's just like, you know, tell me what to do. I just want to make you happy. He's doing things that are wrong, but to him, it's right. He's just trying to protect Andy, so you sympathize. There are actual moments in this movie where I felt sad, like for Chucky. I was like, Dan, you don't deserve that. I know you killed the cat, but I would have just gotten rid of you. I wouldn't have done this. Like, like they, uh, Andy like leads Chucky into a room where him and his friends are going to like beat the shit out of him and like disconnect him. And just like the look on Chucky's face and like what he says, he's like confused by it. He's like, "What the hell? What's what's going on? What are you doing? Why? What, what did I do?" Like after like the cat, like when he initially like strangles the cat, but he doesn't like kill it. He gets like thrown in the closet. He's being punished, and he actually like, even though he's a robot, he seems to have some emotion because he has looks of like confusion. Like, what did I do? Like, don't throw me in the closet again, Andy. I thought that's what you wanted. So I just love that about it. It just adds comedy and it makes the character interesting. Usually that doesn't work for horror villains. They tried to do that with Freddy in the remake where they're like, you know, he was wrongly convicted and then they kind of like flip it. No, no, he was a pedophile. But they try to make you sympathize with him in that movie a little bit and then they make you sympathize with Leatherface and Texas Chainsaw 3D where it's like, he was... Yo, wrongly killed. His family was wrongly killed. Justice was not served. And it's like, bullshit. They murdered people. But it works in this film. It really does. And I like the, like, the slow build-up explanation for how Chucky ends up doing all these things and why, like I said, he's just learning from his environment. He sees Andy using knives to cut bread. He basically, like, when he first opens up the box, he scans Andy's face. He, he, asks, he asks him, like, are you my best friend? Andy says, yes. So therefore... This kid is his best friend, and he just wants to protect him, and he's, like, copying his movements, how he uses utensils, what he likes. Him, Andy, and his friends, they watch Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, and there's, like, all kinds of blood and guts on the screen. They're all laughing. People's faces are getting, like, ripped off, and Chucky's, like, looking at Andy, and he's looking at the movie, like, seeing Andy's excitement towards the film, like, oh, you like violence? Okay, I'll show you violence. So I just like that little explanation without using words. It's just, you see the connection, you see what Chucky's thinking as he's looking at Andy, and then the movie, and back and forth. You don't need any words. I also like that they take the premise of the original, and they, like, flip it on its head, whereas the original was, like, Chucky going after Andy. This one is Chucky protecting Andy. It's the complete opposite. And I heard that that premise was actually the original intent for the 88 film that Don Mancini wrote. Something like, you know, something where they were going to be blood brothers or something. Like, Andy's blood would fuse with... The dolls would be made with blood and therefore Chuck Andy would, like, put his blood in the doll or something weird. I'm not sure if, I, if, I'm, if I'm remembering that correctly, but at the, the script was still the same thing. Whereas Chucky would be protecting Andy, killing Andy's bullies in that original Mancini script. That's what I read, I think. So I could be wrong. It's been a while since I heard that. So they basically took that original premise that they didn't use and they put it here and it, it works. I like it. <laughs> I like how Chucky gets his name. When Andy opens up the package, you have to give him the name. They don't just come with one like in the original Child's Play where each doll is programmed with a name. These do not. You have to give them one. So when he opens, and it's a Star Wars reference because Mark Hamill. Andy says, I want your name to be Han Solo. I think that's what he says. And then Chucky goes, did you say Chucky? He's like, no, Han Solo. And then Chucky's like, Chucky it is. My name's Chucky now. I like that this movie, the whole real message behind it is that we need to be careful about AI. I like that this movie taps into those fears that people have of AI since they saw The Terminator in 1985. This movie gets compared to The Terminator because of this AI doll and it's killing people that it sees as a threat, just like in Terminator, like Skynet destroy the world, or just the humans, because it saw humans as a threat to the planet. It, we, like this movie, I think that's the main message behind it, is like, we need to be careful, because this AI is getting too smart, too big, to the point where we might not be able to control it. So I like that it has like that going for it, like it has that, that it's doing, it's tapping into that fear that people have, I have that fear, it's scary to think about that this shit could actually happen. And that's another thing I like about this movie that I didn't say in my positives and my other review is that this one is more grounded in realism, whereas the other franchise is all voodoo, supernatural stuff, where you just kind of, you know, go with it. This one, it could happen. Like, not maybe like this exactly, but 
it could happen. Things like this, AI going wrong, things being programmed to be wrong. We're going in that direction. I hear news reports all the time, like we're trying to build robot soldiers. It's happening. I like the cheating boyfriend death. The death of this boyfriend gets spoiled in that second trailer. I'm so glad I avoided it. He is taking down the Christmas lights. This is Karen's boyfriend. He has a wife and two kids. So you're like, oh, he's a piece of shit. He's an ugly piece of shit who gets a facelift from Chucky. Literally face lifted off by this machine that like, I, I don't know what it is, but some sort of gardening tool. And there's like watermelons everywhere. And then like his head just gets like ripped off and like chewed up. And his hair gets like thrown onto like a, a gnome, like as a toupee. So like there's comedy attached to that death. But there is one death involving this woman where there's not comedy involved. And I like that. I like that. Like I said in my other review, I like that Chucky goes after just anybody. They're not all assholes that need to die. There's a woman who's really nice. She lives right down the hall from Andy. And she, her only crime was just being nice to Andy. And Chucky saw that as a threat. Like, you're going to take my friend away from me? I don't think so. And he utilizes his AI abilities to control the castle castle and cars because this company not only do they have drones and now dolls and like Roomba things that clean the floor the thermostats they also have cars self-driving cars that pick her up and he controls it and has her crash and he somehow takes her seatbelt out I don't think that could happen like seatbelts aren't electronic or AI controlled so I'm not sure what was going on there so maybe I don't know, like, I don't think that could happen. But he unbuckles her, she crashes, and then he's in the back seat. It's actually a good jump scare, because he's, like, in the back seat. He pops up, says, like, peekaboo, and stabs her in the chest. So that's the one, probably one of the scariest moments of Chucky, kill-wise, whereas the other ones were just kind of funny. But I love that he does utilize his powers to, to control all kinds of stuff. You got the one guy hanging on a metal beam. He's got, like, this metal bar that he's hanging on and Chucky increases the thermostat that he can control. It's a Castlin thermostat. So therefore the the hot the the beam he's holding on to is getting hotter and hotter because the he's increasing the temperature of the room. So therefore his hands are like melting and he just lets go and falls on a circular blade and it's like off camera. You see his leg get like ripped off real quick. There's no, like, money shot, really. And another little thing that I recognize as something that is in common with the original is that Mike thinks that Andy did it. Especially when his mom dies. She's the one that gets stabbed in the chest and gets the castling car crash, that scene. Uh, he suspects him, just like in the original. So that's another thing that I was like, oh, that's kind of like the original. Andy, if you know something... You better tell me. Something's wrong with Chucky. I was wondering how they were going to use this earpiece that Andy has. It doesn't say Castlin on it, but it's basically from Castlin, I guess, because Aunt, uh, Chucky uses it as like a Bluetooth that he can speak to Andy while not in the same room. So I like that. I, I was wondering where, where they were going with that. They don't use his hearing impaired um, to any like benefit of like suspense. Like he can't hear no more. He's permanently deaf. Like, they don't use that Andy's deafness to do anything, really. It's just like he has the earpiece, the hearing aid, and Chucky can speak to him through it. So that was like the only thing that they used the hearing aid for, but it was all right. I like that there's like a little office space homage where at the end of office space, if you've seen that comedy, it's a good comedy. Check it out. There's this printer in that movie that everybody in the office hates, and towards the end of the film... They take the printer that doesn't work or fax machine, whatever. They take it to this field and they beat the shit out of it a bunch in like slow motion to rap music. I had, I saw something in this movie. It, it reminded me of it. It's not in that same manner, but Chucky and his friend, not Chucky, Andy and his friends, after Chucky's dead, he's dead. Ch uh, Andy and his friends, they all have like bats and stuff and they take turns like beating the shit out of Chucky. I was like, that is office space right there. You throw some rap music in there and put it in slow motion. It's office space. I couldn't help but laugh while watching that. And two little small things I just want to quickly point out that I like. There is like a Michael Myers shot where this perv is in the for the foreground. In the background, you see Chucky on the table and he does like a sit-up. It's very Michael Myers-like and I like that shot. And then while Chucky is controlling all these things like the car, the drones, his finger lights up like E.T. And he's like moving his hand like like a composer, like, <laughs> he's like, all right, this move there, move there. like, he's moving things with his finger. I thought that was odd, but it was kind of funny. 
and like it just glows like ET. He's like, but those are all the things I have to say right now about the remake. My thoughts haven't changed yet. I haven't seen it a second time, but if there's something that I left out that you wanted me to talk about, let me know in the comments below. What did you like about this movie? Spoiler, you can put spoilers in the comments now. What you liked, what you didn't like. Do you agree with me at all in this list? Um, I already said my ranking. I'm not going to give a movie ranking right now because I already did my other video. I still give this movie a B plus. Go out and buy it. It's a great uh, remake. It does what a remake should do. It takes a different stance with the doll. It makes a whole new Chucky. It, if you could just separate yourself from that franchise that you know and love and just see this for its own thing, you can enjoy it. So just separate Brad Dorff's performance, his voice, his laugh. Separate that and you can enjoy this. You might not get used to the look of the doll. I didn't until like over halfway through it. I kind of, It kind of grew on me. That's one thing that I wish they could have done better was the look of the doll. There's moments where it looks good. There's moments where it's like, oh, And especially like in certain lighting. Like if he's creepy and he's like in the background, he's not up close, he's in shadows. It looks good. But and especially with red eyes. I like the red eyes thing. But I would, that's like the one mixed thing, things that, the one thing that I would wish that they would have gone back and redid was give me a different looking doll. Yes, make it your own thing. Do a different story. But don't make it look so fucking jarringly different. But hey, at least we got a Chucky movie. I can't complain too much. And just be grateful that we also have another Chucky movie coming from Don Mancini and a TV series. He says he's going to make another movie and a TV series. So we still get the best of both worlds. So I don't see the reason behind all the complaining. I thought the movie was great. I mean, it's not fantastic. It's not like an A movie. Like, yes, awesome, tacular. Nothing like that. Things could have been better, but overall, I still enjoyed it. So go out and buy it. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. Hit this like button over here. Support this video. And you can follow me on social media if you wish to do so. And please consider becoming a subscriber today just by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds to see more. And until next time, I'll feed the scene.